Good morning, good morning. There's the first ninja arriving on his giant motorbike. It's bigger than he is, my God. <laughs> Both the two guys that work there have bikes. I thought at first it was only one and they're comparing, but as you know, they both have bikes. They come by a quite big motorbikes. And just a second before I turned on the button here, the giant air conditioner at the rocks started up. That's the roo you hear in the background. It'll come and go all morning while we're doing this. It's October. It's the first clear weekend of the autumn here in, here in uh, Asakusa and the bars and stuff, they're going to be jammed. They're going to be busy, busy, busy. The last few weekends have been rainy and mixed weather. It's now a clear autumn skies here. There may be more rain coming, more typhoons, we don't know, but right now it's looking really good. And it is going to be busy. The ninja boys are going to be going nuts all day today for sure. There's the air conditioner going down. So the next few minutes we'll have generally a peaceful background there. We will officially be open two hours from now. That's what I put the you know, I put the emoji up a few minutes ago. Ten o'clock this morning. Can I copy and paste this? We're opening in a couple of hours, 10 o'clock this morning. It's actually no big deal. I mean, it doesn't really make any difference. There's been customers in all during this last week. While we've been getting ready, people have come in anyway. So there's no, there isn't going to be, it's like a Mitsukoshi department store, stand here at 10 o'clock and open the doors and bow to all the customers streaming and there's nothing is going to happen. But yeah, we're finally open. We're finally open. But having said that, we have a massive, massive staffing problem. None of the previous people are still with us. It's not because we laid them all off and they've all drowned in the past two and a half years. We've actually tried to keep all of our staff with us. It's just that over two and a half years, things changed. Audrey has got two kids. Um, Marcella has two kids. Evelyn and Tobias went back to Germany. Wada Bayashan, her husband, is still ill. She has to take care of him. Teiko-san has family to take care of. Shiba-san is making her own prints and working with the uh, uh, Kabuki people. Just, uh, we've lost them. We've been trying in the past few weeks, couple of months, to train a few new people. And we do have Akasaka-san, Sakai-san, Ken-san, Nakazawa-san. I know the lady from Holland, I can't remember her name, Mi not Miata, I don't know. We have a bunch of people coming, but they're not ready yet. And also, not one of them can do weekends. So for the moment, weekends, it's just going to be yours truly, sitting here Saturday and Sunday with his fingers crossed, hoping that nobody comes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I found this at the door. We've been having mic troubles, so I found this. It must have been delivered last night. They won't be delivering this morning at 7.30 in the morning. It was an Amazon package, and they must have dropped it off late last night after I was here. So just give me a second here. <laughs> we'll try a new mic. <laughs> Well, Ayana-san and Watanabe-san, the new employees here, you know, they are actually, they are contracted employees with, with legal contracts and they are full-time employees. And a typical Japanese company has lots of overtime and all kinds of demands on employees. And we have decided right from the get-go that we will treat our employees uh, with the terms of the law. I mean, it sounds silly. We are going to follow the law with these employees, which means no overtime. These, the, the two ladies are Monday to Friday employees. Saturday is not part of a normal working person's contract. And we're going to stick, stick by the law. That would seem to be the microphone part. And the cable looks to be 99 miles long. Excuse me a second, I was hoping that I'd get this done before the stream started, but as I said, it, it just, uh, the package was waiting outside for me. I have no idea what this is. Any hints? Unboxing videos, my god, that's the thing, isn't it? Unboxing videos. A 
No, no, we ordered it. We were having so much mic trouble. People have been complaining about a hiss and stuff like that. I've been testing, 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 testing. So I said, this is a more, much more expensive mic than the kind that we've been playing with. You know, I've just up to now, the one, the one on my chest right now is Sony's basic model lav, but it's only like 15 bucks. This one was more. This was uh, about four times that. It's got a 99 meter long cable. I will put it, I put it on upside down. Hang on a sec. Start again, Dave. I will put it right side by side. And we're, you, we're now going to have one of those pop pop. I got to unplug the old one, plug the new one in. So if you're on headphones, there may be a crackle as I unplug the old one. Take care, please. Old one coming out. The old one came out and the new one went in. Do we have any difference? I don't know. No idea, no idea, no idea. Let's get rid of the old one. Maybe there will be no difference at all. I don't know. We have a low frequency hum, terrible noise. Pop again. This is, hiss is smaller, but now we have the 60 hertz hum. I'll go back to the old one, okay? I'll test this stuff later off camera. I just thought it might be a way to instantly improve this thing. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Okay, we're back to the old mic. Okay, it's not going into the laptop directly. You know, the, the MacBook that I have doesn't take audio input. It's got a headphone jack, which will, if you have a, a headphone with mic, it works. But if you have just a mic, it doesn't work. There's lots of internet talk about how to get around this. The laptop I've got, world's fastest freaking laptop doesn't have an audio input. So it's a Roland Ederol USB interface, UA-1EX. It's quite old, it's about 10 years old. The little mic plugs into the USB interface and then into the laptop through a USB port. I've tried different jacks, I've tried the three and the four, we've been through that, we've been through all the adapters I've been through this hour after hour after hour. I cannot get audio into this damn laptop. The audio, the audio interface is capital UA hyphen one EX. It's made by the Roland company and the brand name is Ederol. And it takes all kinds of different mic inputs. I have the little three prong 3.5 millimeter plugged into it from my, from my, uh, this thing. But that interface is old. I can understand it's old. Okay, we have actually we have some noisy persuader work to do first. It's going to be noise anyway. Today you and I have got to finish this block. I'll zoom out a bit. I got in trouble the other day doing this because uh, I was zoomed in too close and I kept going off camera. So here we go. I'm going to be rotating this thing around and around and around. So I'll keep it zoomed out a bit. You don't need any detail here. We're just going to be making some noise. Okay, good morning gang, good morning gang. Okay, 
Give me a few minutes to make some noise. What I will do, I won't do the whole thing all the way around for the next 15, 20 minutes. I'll do five minutes or so at one side, then I'll do quiet work clearing it off, then we'll switch to the other side and do quiet work clearing it off. So let's do it that way. So rather than just bang and make noise for a half an hour, give me a couple of minutes to make noise. Clear off this section. Okay, excuse me, stand by. camera has a mind of its own and it's well it's a slight cable pull on it no big deal <laughs> okay here we go give me a couple minutes here dun, 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 dun. Registration mark is here. I'm going to leave it. Registration marks are here and here. Thank you for the warning, but I think I'm okay on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always appreciated about that warning. Thank you. You can never go uh, wrong. This wood is hard, you know, it really is hard. This block is gonna last a very, 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 very long time. I got lucky with this. Well, well, not lucky, I had saved it for a long time and then dug it up. And the reason we were able to use it, it's too small and wouldn't have been usable for this, for this print, but this is lucky. Okada-san's design, the only key lines are in the center. The actual print will be out to here, it'll be up higher, but that part of it doesn't have key lines. So for those of you who are curious about what's going on here, I was able to use a smaller piece of wood, a piece of wood smaller than the print, for these keys. 
and I just embedded it into a piece of junk plywood which will hold the registration marks. So it's just a bit of fun or whatever creative improvisation to try and get a piece of wood into use that would have been too small for the print. And it's embedded in there and epoxy down, so it's not about to pop out of here at all. Absolutely no chance of that. It's in there for good. We're going to keep back about the usual rule there. It's about three fingers. We don't need to take off all the wood way out to the corner. So we're looking at something like this. Is the guide to where we're, we're going to have to take away this wood. Let me just do this last little bit noisy, then we'll switch to quiet work. Hang on one sec. This is so hard. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> the plywood is nothing. <laughs> so. mm, that's against the grain. Back when I was starting doing that port series back in the late 1980s and early 1990s, there was no, we weren't using plywood at that time, it was all solid wood. And most of the wood I got was sort of like around this hardness, the wood for the key blocks. So this was just normal. I didn't know that there was any other kind of wood and I just used this as, as normal wood. But I didn't have the wide chisels at that time. So for that time, the early prints in the port series that I made, at this part of the job, after I had done cutting the key lines, I am then using stuff like this. What was my biggest one? My biggest one was the six millimeter. 
I was using chisels like this to cut away all of this wood. It took ages and ages and ages. And I can't believe I was so stupid. You know, I think the mindset was that I didn't have the official Japanese tools. So whatever, I just used what I had. But any chisel would have been fine. You didn't need an official, you know, uh, ukiwe appointed certified chisel. You could have taken away wood with anything you, you know, you had. So I don't know, it's just years and years and years. And I still see this. Some of the wood blocks that I see from other people who are carving, I see all the wide areas and little chut, 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 little, uh, little uh, chisel marks. Okay, just a minute more, and then we'll switch over to quiet work. Hang on one sec. Just this last little corner here for now. The other aspect of this clearing that I think we've talked about this before, the left-handedness of it, you know, one sec. earlier days of doing this, I hadn't realized that I was doing it with a, a bias towards one hand. I'm left-handed, and because I was carving and printing all my own blocks, I would learn what wasn't cleared well enough, what was going to leave marks, and I would learn to clear it a bit better. But there was a lefty bias in that when it came time to print the block, this left-handed guy gets his brush ready and he starts brushing things like this. And when you've got a line like this at your right-hand side, you tend to rub it with the front of the brush like this because you can see what you're doing. So I didn't actually need to be cleared too much on the right-hand side because I was a lefty. But when you're a lefty then, you're coming to do this, you're doing it with the tip of the brush, the tail of the brush sticks out a lot more. And I had been, without thinking about it, I had been carving closer on the right-hand side and farther on the left-hand side because that had been the, the bias that my brushing brought to it. And all the Poet series and well into the Sudimono albums, the prints I've been showing you in the show and tell this last couple of weeks, were all carved that way. And that was okay, totally okay, until we bring those blocks and give them to the workshop upstairs here. And those are all right-handed people. 
and they're coming along and they've got this block that I've carved with lots of space on the left and they're rubbing, oh, this is cool, lots of space, no problem. They get to the right and they're doing it here and the back of their brush is banging the blocks. So pretty much all of those blocks from the Suriwano albums, when I do bring them down over to Mokohankan and pass them on to these printers, I got to get them on the bench first and clear off some more stuff on the right hand side because there was a built-in bias to my own work that I, I never even thought of or realized until I started having my blocks printed by other people. So nowadays, when I'm, when I'm carving, of course, I keep this in mind and I keep things more balanced. But all the blocks I made in the old days are sort of, quote, unusable. Quote. So I'm saying, could we use power tools? Yeah, the whole thing. You could do the whole thing with lasers and CNC and turn it on and go to bed and it'll all be ready for you in the morning. This kind of work, a lot of this work, can be done by power tools. Actually, to do, to do what I just did with a power tool is not going to really give you too much fun benefit in time because you've got to be really careful how close you come to this. It's going to be noisy. It's not going to be done cleanly. It's dangerous. It done, what's the point? You know, what's the point? Any paper out today? Yes, there is just one package of paper out today, Ishikawa-san, and she's doing a, she's starting a new batch of prints today, and she is doing snow at Hiraizumi. I know the print we featured at the top of our last, I know, uh, email that we sent out, email newsletter, it has done very, very well. We've done two batches of it. We're now in the third batch. She's doing 60 copies of it. Snow at Hiraizumi. Never seen this before. He's parked across the street today. Newbies who don't know, this is the garbage truck. No, it's a different garbage truck. That's a city garbage truck. That is marked Taito Ku. It's a city garbage truck, which we never see here on Saturdays. No idea. Special request, maybe. That's the place where they're doing the renovation. I'll put the outside mic off for a minute till they've shut their engines down. Outside mic is now off. The door's open, though. No? So. I have no idea. You guys, I got to do some work. You tell me what's going on. No idea. But that is a city branded garbage truck.
there's somebody parked where you can't see, just off to the right, and he's got his engine running. Is that another garbage truck? What the hell's going on out there today? What's going on out there? Trucks and noise. This is the time we've got for our stream here, actually. It is one of the noisiest times on this street. You know. From about 10 o'clock or so, deliveries are technically forbidden. They're supposed to get all their deliveries done before 10 o'clock. Soka NHK, there's, it's a rebroadcast, eh? that program that NHK put up on their website today. It's something they broadcast, it must be about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I don't remember. Has somebody put the link up to it? So NHK, this is a rebroadcast. We, we made this, as I said, about a year and a half ago. And there's a couple of strange things in that, in that show. The entire format was completely pre-programmed by NHK. It's part of a series they do, interviewing foreigners who live in Japan. So the format is completely controlled. They said, please introduce us to one of your colleagues, because we have a My Colleague Corner. And they said, please introduce us to one of your treasures, because we have a My Treasure Corner. So these things were not my ideas. These were, these were from the uh, NHK producer. Give me a sec, see what's going on out there. Hang on a sec.
<laughs> so there's an excuse for the noise. Let's just leave it there for a minute. We're paying for this, actually. <laughs> I didn't know the schedule. There's six trees on this street. Actually, my concern right now, this is tree number one. Tree number two is mine. <laughs> it's the one in front of my shop. Now, actually, I talked to the Kaito son about this months and months ago. Tree number two, my tree, has really, really flourished. And it's mostly covering my big barren sign. And the fear was they were going to cut it down. He said, look, that tree is really bothering you. It's blocking your shop. It's time to maybe get rid of it. And I'm like, no, not any way. No, no, no. He was talking about getting rid of it, like cutting it down. I'm like, I do not care. Please, my customers don't come because they saw this sign. My customers follow their Google, you know, their Google Maps. No, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I repeated this a thousand times. I'm okay. So I don't think they're going to cut mine down, but it may be that I'm next here in a half an hour from now. How many guys? Five guys, a truck, the money. There's going to be two guys directing traffic. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm paying for it. Me and my team are paying for it. So, But it's got to be done. It's got to be done. If they grow too large, you've got a danger of branches falling on falling on people. So, of course, this is, this is not really optional. No, this is uh, the trees here on this street. It's a, I don't know who owns the tree, probably me, our group, but the... The street beautification was a triple uh, combination. The prefecture pays part, the city pays part, and we as a merchants association paid actually most of it for the new paving, the new lighting, the new stuff like that. So maintenance is on us. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm paying for those dudes here today, but it's okay, whatever. The street looks beautiful, people come by and enjoy it. We've got a happy, healthy environment. I'm not in any way negative about this at all. I'm told also by the, uh, by the people who have been here longer than I have, the, the previous tenant of this first floor, for example, he was the you know, uh, vice president of the Merchants Association during a bunch of those years. And he told me some stories about this, that the beautification, he was here before the beautification, when it was just a ratty, dirty street with garbage all over the place and stuff like that. And he says it took around 10 years from the first idea being proposed, meetings with city, meetings with prefecture, meetings with this, meetings with bank, whatever. He said it was about 10 years start to finish before the proposal was put up, before it actually finished. And I stepped in a few years after this was done, so I wasn't part of any of the planning for this. They are going to cut it pretty aggressively because you don't want to come back next week. You know, you want to come back a year from now or whatever. I don't know if this is the right time to trim, but it has to be done for that tree because it was now getting in the way of the sidewalks. So I think they're probably going to chop it back quite a ways, but it's okay. We're fine. There's lots of greenery around here.
Is it mandatory to be in a merchant's association? This is funny. This is a gray zone. This is a gray zone and caused us trouble back at the beginning. It turns out that the merchant's association is made up of businesses that are on the first floor all the way along this two block area. It's two blocks, north side, south side, so four, four city blocks worth. And the articles of incorporation or whatever it is for the thing specify that businesses who have a presence on the first floor in any one of these buildings are invited, expected to become part of the association. You pay dues and you get the benefits from it. And when we first moved here, we weren't on the first floor. There was a jeweler down here. We moved upstairs on the second floor. And I knew nothing about any of these rules. We just moved in and we heard one of the cleaning things happening. We were still building our shop. We looked out our window one Tuesday and saw that the gang was cleaning and knew nothing about this, but wow, it's a community cleaning. We're new here. Let's make sure we show our face and come in and join. And me and whoever it was with me that day, I don't even remember, Aoi Amasan, whatever, we grabbed a broom or something, came downstairs and tried to join, and Kaicho-san is yelling at me, who are you? Get out of here, get out of here. And I almost had a fight with the guy. What are you talking about? I'm trying to help, you know, just get out, get out. And there was almost a fight between me and him. It was really kind of strange. And it wasn't until years later that I learned they put this clause in only first floor shops because so much uh, undesirable type businesses are upstairs. <laughs> Third floor above the theater is a Yaksa office. Second floor above where the Korean hot dog place is used to be uh, an after hours mahjong parlor where you know people would come and, and gamble. I didn't say that. So they didn't want anything to do with businesses that were upstairs, you know, upstairs businesses, you know. The mahjong parlor is gone, long ago. And this may have been uh, the the, the sort of police may be asking for this kind of rule, or maybe it was just a common sense rule. I don't know anything about this. You know, nothing. Look at the tree. <laughs> Look at that. Chup. It's okay. It, it looks still fine. It'll come back very quickly. I learned this about trees. So, so maybe I'm next here. Are they coming over? Yep. We're next. Let me get the camera moved. Hang on a sec.
<laughs> no, no, I, I'm not. Uh, ha I'm not opposite this at all. Just say hi to the guys. Thank you. I asked him what's the schedule once a year because I don't remember. It's been a couple of years since he did this. I said once a year. And he says, yeah, whatever, whatever. It, so it seems a bit sort of random, you know. And that's why the city garbage truck was down there. Remember, we saw the city garbage truck rolling around and backing up. The city garbage truck is there, ready to take the you know. It's taking the leaves. These guys are all chopping it down, and one of the guys is throwing it in the back of the garbage truck. No, I, I'm not uh, in opposition to this at all. We need to do this. These guys are happy, chubby, cheerful guys just all day long, chopping trees. <laughs> so, and I guess this is actually city fruit. So part of the maintenance agreement that we have here, again, I don't know the details. This is a city hired crew, a city chartered crew. Anyway, let's do a bit of work with Dave, 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 Dave. I don't know how many guys, five, six, seven guys, hard hats, two on the street. <laughs> <laughs> grain, grain, which way is the grain one of them? But how different is this if like those of you who are in America or Germany, or whatever? How different is this from the way it's done in your city? You know, there's trees down all the streets. There must be crews that come in and, and blast them like this a couple of times a year or so. This can't be just the Japan. Talk about the ladder, I don't know. What is it? A special Oh I see it's sort of a tripod ladder, is it? It seems to flare out. Yeah, it flares way out at the base, the two legs, and then there's sort of a pole. Yeah. And he's standing on the pole part actually. Interesting. There's a little platform on it. He's standing on the pole. I see, his right leg is on the pole, his left leg is on the ladder part. 
Well, what are you going to do if you're trimming a tree? Someone's complaining about safety. I don't know. Hanging on to the tree, I guess. I don't know. No idea. So maybe this is all in, in occasion of Mokahankan opening. At two, one hour from now we're opening up, so we're getting a tree trim just before we open. <laughs> This tree and the previous one are different. The last tree had become really crazy. Branches were growing out from the trunk and they were blocking the sidewalk actually. This must have been maybe because of a phone call. The tree across the street sprouts in crazy ways. There's extra sprouts coming from the ground. Sprouts come from the trunk and they grow really quickly. So it was blocking the sidewalk. This one hasn't done that. This is just a tree and it's got just whatever you tell me, just overgrown. If it had been left alone, it would just be a normal tree. But uh, I guess they're trying to make sure it doesn't grow too big. You know. But the one across the street was actually a problem in the way that this one wasn't. And some of the trees farther down the street, there's six trees in all. That's why we call it Dok Dori. It's part of, the, part of the deal here. The other trees farther down don't seem to be uh, too bad. Maybe the one at the very far end, it's a big cherry tree and it has got kind of big, so they're going to probably get down there too. Don't know.
you might be noticing there's this uh, circle here on the block. There's a new light. As part of putting new lights and stuff in the shop this week, we refreshed a bunch of the old lights. And I hadn't, oh, broke the knife. Look at that. Click. Chunk. Broke the tip. And I hadn't realized, but the light above my head had been getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer all the time. So Aoyama san came in today, replaced, replaced lights. And how about yours? I'm like, it seems okay. He said, I kind of think it's kind of old. So he changed it. And now we have, boom, we have this big bright light. Put my head in the way. Someone's asking, what's my go-to lunch place? I'm sorry, in recent times, my go-to lunch place is the same as my go-to dinner place. It's the local convenience store, the 7-Eleven. I'm, uh, I'm still not going to restaurants. I'm sorry. You know, we still have actually quite a serious health situation here in Tokyo. You know? I, don't, I didn't look for the past couple of days, but last time I checked, a week or so ago, there's upwards of 300 people a day dying in Tokyo still from the, from the virus. So older people like me, we're still not all that happy about the fact that things are opening up so widely so quickly. You know, I realize it's got to happen. I'm not against opening. But I myself, I'm being careful. I'm masking everywhere, as are all of our staff. The shop is a masked zone. And I don't go to restaurants. So I don't have a go-to place. I'm sorry. I'm looking forward to the future when things do get more relaxed and easy because the restaurants around here now are dramatically different than they were before. They are almost all now no smoking, which I am very, very much looking forward to. When I used to go to restaurants here, it was still the pre-Olympic time and the old regulations were still in place. But now most restaurants in this area and anywhere around Tokyo, or, or the country, I don't know, have become no smoking. Well, it's nothing like a North American 7-Eleven. There's fresh food. We've talked about it many, many times on this stream. It's full of hugely fresh food. Any number of times I will grab my salad in the evening and I will grab it from the front of the deck there, take it to the cash register. The cash register won't let it be. And the clerk says, sorry, go get another one. Or the clerk runs to get another one because it's past the three-hour limit. It's been on the shelf for more than three hours. Boom, no sale. What do I think of changing the wallpaper behind me? We are going to change this, actually. I should have done it last night. We have a new one standing by. We've got three or four we haven't used. And yes, thank you for reminding me when I see it. Um, in fact, thank you, thank you, thank you. I should have done that before starting this stream. In fact, I'm going to do it after the stream and go get a new one from upstairs. In fact, why don't we do it on the stream? Let me, let me, let me stop five minutes before show and tell. I'll get the next one. Let's change it. Let's do this today. Talk to the egg. Okay, okay, Jeff, to ask. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't really think of myself as the chocolate egg giver. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. The landlady, because she feels a bit 
sort of, she's happy that we've been paying our rent all the way through. So she's had no bad impact from us from the pandemic at all. But she feels a bit guilty in that she has taken her money every month, every month, every month, and she knows we've been closed. So she does sort of have this bit of a, what can I do to help kind of a feeling, you know. And we just told her, look, just, just nothing, just hang tight. We're using your building. We decided to stay and pay the rent. We know you live on this. We can't ask you to cut the rent or whatever. So, but, but she has been sort of, a, well, what can I do? What can I do? <laughs> and we just said, just fly with it. Just fly with it. We're still so happy that she's not the money-grubbing type of landlord, you know, because if she had the same approach that most of the landowners around here have to get as much blood out of those people as you possibly can. That's the mood, you know. The two million dollar, the two million yen rent at the end of the street. We're just so happy that she isn't that kind of person, you know. Once she passes away and it goes to other members of the family, it's almost certainly going to be a very different story. And when she passes away, it may be the end of Mokohong Khan in this building. We don't know. We can't tell. We can't buy it. We can't renovate it. We can't rebuild it. Nobody can rebuild it. It's very, very much an, an up-in-the-air situation. All we can do is just hang on for as long as possible. Ask her, you know, hope that she has a, a long, healthy life. Yeah, the rents have gone nuts, absolutely nuts. That two million yen for that place is two, three, four, five, six, six or seven times what the previous restaurant was paying. There was an udon restaurant in there. I don't know the exact number, but it would have been about it would have been about 300,000, something like that. I think it would have been about 300,000. Well, no, she doesn't have any children. It's going to be distant family. And their only interest is going to be one thing, cash, cash. So it's pretty clear the way it's going to go. They are going to want to sell the property. Okay, we have come around. We have cleared. I've got more junk to take away here. There's no point in starting that right now at 9.06. So let's do this plan B. Let's move the camera. Let me get the new tapestry. Hang on a second, okay? Hang on. Let me move the camera. And I'll go bring back a tapestry from upstairs.
the Mr. Peace. <laughs> I was before we were doing before when I thought I was going to say these guys are all it's all manual you know cut 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 sweep 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 none of those leaf blowers here I was going to say he's got a little leaf blower actually he's got a little leaf blower <laughs> friendly guys they're okay they're just beavering away I don't know where they're going next are they going to do the next tree which you can see down the street I have no idea <laughs> Good, good, good. Okay, let's put this on all. We have a choice here because, as I said, our, our landlady has been bringing these new tapestry things. She, around every six months or so, she brings another one. And I've been showing her the old one's still here. Like, we haven't, you know, changed yet. She still, she still brings these things. So I have a choice now. We have a, is that a cherry? Ch snowy bamboo with plum blossoms. Or we have a, a crane motif, a hexagon, hexagonal crane motif. Or we have, a, what's this? It's kind of a wisteria pattern, I think. <laughs> it's October. Let's go with this one. There's no way I can put the plum blossoms up. It's October. Let's put this one up. Can I, I don't know if I'll see a camera. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, this camera will have to do. I can't move. There's too many cables here, so I can't move too much here. But let's have this a go. Oh, mic, 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 mic. Is there an iron in the house? Here's the pattern. Is there an iron in the house? No. I think it'll, I know, I think it'll, I know. It'll hang itself down. I don't have an iron here at all, I'm sorry. An iron, what's that? Boy, what a day full of action today. We are at 62, 
62.4. Okay, 9.15. Actually, we're pretty much there. I know anything left now, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with what's here now. The new jeans that Snowy Evergreen sent, they're okay. They're, they're a tiny bit tight, but they're okay. I couldn't use them. I couldn't use those new jeans for working when I'm hunched over the bench, but for walking around town, okay. The spare tire is almost history. There's a little, little tiny bit of it left. I think when I make the YouTube video, the end of the year video, you know, where we show our stuff and I stand in front of the counter. I've done this for the same three years in a row. I've stood in front of the counter. And last year's video, there's this, well, not giant spare tire, but it, by my standards, a giant spare tire. So what's my height? I don't know. I know I'm, I'm not 1800. I used to be. I'm now down from eight. What am I now? I don't know. I just don't remember. I'm sorry. But it's, it's, it's dropping steadily now. My height is dropping steadily. We need some spare. It's okay. I'm, I'm not going to turn myself into a rake. I'm just now pretty much back to the way I have been most of my life. All of my life, I was 63 kilograms ever since I like grew up and left home. And the pandemic did it. I went to 72 something. And now I'm just back to normal. I'm back to normal. Someone said, don't get sick. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. I mean, I mean, that's the way I'll manage it. Don't get sick. Okay, where are we? Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to bring you this, this uh, mountain picture. I didn't. Whatever. Rain check. Monday morning we'll do it. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we looked at the first two prints in Surimono album number two. Send me an email, somebody, please. Prepare the Mount Fuji picture for next stream, the one on the old paper. No chocolate egg for Dave. Whatever. No chocolate egg for Dave. Okay. This one now is a replay. This is interesting. We had the half-remembered story that in the first album I had used a Koryusai picture that had been... Uh, not quite only black and white, but it had reduced number of colors and I put more colors into it. Come a few months later, in it would have been March of the next year, this would now be March of, 20, of 2000, I come back to Koryusai again. And this time the focus wasn't on putting colors in because the original did have colors. The focus was on how do you do that there karazuri technique? Now, I had seen some karazuri before, the embossing technique. But for this one, it was time to go to town. So go to town, I did. And this one has embossing. You could Grand Canyon, you can go down there and walk in that embossing. It's so deep and rich. I chose especially thick fluffy paper and cut good embossing on it and down we went in there. And I knew at the time but didn't understand the full nuance of it. The title was Mitate Kusaki Hakke. And it was Hakke is eight views. Mitate is easily translated as a parody. Mitate means what you see is not what you get. I mean, the literal words, midu and standing. It, anyway, the, the meaning is there is a, what you see is not what's really here. You're supposed to think about something else. Uh, in, back in the Edo time, they would do a mitate, and there's three girls there, and they're actually three old generals from Chinese history, whatever, something like this. And you, there's enough clues in there that you're supposed to know what's going on. And this one, the fact that it's hakke, all literate, people knew what's going on right away and they would see the picture and they would think which one of the scenes is this? Is this evening rain? Is this clearing weather? Is this returning sails? Returning sails could be we've got a bird coming home here but no it's of course 
the white peonies are supposed to represent snowy mountains. This is the evening snow print, of course. And I, I sort of, I knew this, but didn't really realize how much of, of a, how much of a deep, wide ramification this thing had. And mitate parody kusaki, uh, literally, that's its grasses and trees, whatever. It's, it's just simply saying nature stuff. And they've taken plants, Koryusai had taken plants, and put them into the eight views concept. And this one was evening snow. And uh, I don't know if I said it. I actually, I got in trouble with this one. It was easy enough to think, okay, let's learn how to do embossing. Embossing is actually easy. There's nothing really to learn. It's just let's go ahead and do this thing. But to make the embossing deep, I picked a good, rich, thick paper. Maybe even a, from a Iwano-san I might have ordered in advance. Like, next batch of paper, make me some good, nice, thick stuff or something. I don't remember. This is 20-odd years ago. Or I just selected from a batch of 200, took the thickest ones that were there. I don't remember. But the problem was, of course, Dave here is not much of a power printer. Dave certainly then, and to some extent now, I'm a kind of a wimpy printer. I don't have much musculature. I print properly. I let the tool do the work. I do this okay. But I don't in any way have a bunch of power and guts behind me. Thick, rich paper is, of course, very difficult to print deep, smooth color. So when I did the test printing on this, I very quickly found out, hey, the embossing looks really cool, but oh my God, you have a problem printing both the deep red on this and the background and getting it smooth. And I struggled. I struggled. The embossing was nothing, but I struggled with getting a rich color. And I know, I know what I did now. And in fact, if our girls upstairs were printing something like this, they would do it the same way. I did it with multiple passes. You don't try and do it all at once. You layer it up twice. And maybe even, if you're a weak printer, maybe even three times. So that's what I would have done on this. And probably even on the background too. I would have printed it once in a very light color and then printed it again on top to give it a good richness. And the same thing with the red flower, absolutely. And this has been one of our most popular prints of all time. When I put it in the Surimono albums, I wasn't selling the prints one by one by one. You could get the whole album only. They're now minor, minor sold out, volume two. But these blocks are now back here at Mokohankan, and we are printing them ourselves uh, here. I, I signed them back in the old days. The Mokohankan ones don't have my signature. And this is one of our top selling old time prints. This is in our shop now. If you drop in this afternoon, it's here and it's it's not just me that found this attractive. And somewhere in the background is the idea that we should dig up the other seven designs and get it put out there as a set. But it's not a high priority for us right now. Do we have, what, wait, 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 do I have uh, broadcast problems here? Testing, testing, one, two, three. I turned off the audio from outside. I can put that back now that the trucks are gone. I think we're okay, right? Whatever, people are saying no, nothing, no, no video, no audio. I, I, I think we're okay at this end. Okay, moving along. Let's look at one more of these. Again, I, I'm sort of... I'm realizing too, I broke my rules. When I started the Suribono albums, I promised myself it's not going to be just all about famous people. None of that Hokusai Hiroshige stuff. You know, we're going to go back to uh, people that nobody's ever heard of. And yet here we are again in the second album with yet another Hokusai print. The goal again was to do a few things. I was trying to learn about the different types of carving. This one has some kasure bori, some scratch carving in it. And it also has what could be the very first time I tried to do what's called shomenzuri, front rubbing. And if I can try and move this so that it shines, look at the top gray surface of his armrest. 
if I can find the right angle here. There, it may show up there. There it is. The top surface of his armrest is embossed uh, to give a shiny surface on the paper. It doesn't show up really vividly here because it's a light gray. If it was black, it would show, and it's a nice light touch. And it would have been the, perhaps the first time that I tried to do Shonbin Zuri. You know the story, right? It's, it's a famous uh, episode from Chinese, uh, Chinese philosophy, I guess. The philosopher and the butterfly. It's not going to focus. We're still too close. It's the famous, I don't know. I, I can't. The, the story is told in many, many ways. There's a philosopher who is daydreaming one day. He's sitting in his room. He's philosophizing. He's half asleep. Is he really asleep or is he dreaming or is he conscious or, or half dreaming? A butterfly comes in the room, flits around. He sees the butterfly. I'm not the guy to tell the story because I haven't internalized it. But I guess he's saying, you know, what would it like to be a butterfly flying around looking down at the philosopher and is he the philosopher is he the butterfly which, which is the meta version here the story goes around and around and, and Hokusai is just giving us a visual of the same story so in a nutshell what is it whether he was dreaming he was the butterfly or he was a butterfly that it was dreaming it was a man whatever it's it's very meta and self-referential and I don't know <laughs> But there it is. And also there's a, he's got a, this is, this is a, a samurai. This is an educated man. He's got a sword, and yet he has, and these are tea ceremony implements. We see either a tea cup, it could be, or it could be a tea caddy, and the, the um, feather is one of the implements for, I guess, brushing the inside of the tea cup before you put your tea into it. I don't know. There is, it's just hinting us that there is uh, education and tea involved here. And I had a good time. I learned a lot carving this one, and away I went. And here we are carving Hokusai again, you know. I don't know if I talked about this. So no, let's grab one more print then to, to say, because this is something else that's actually quite important and quite valuable here. How can I, how can I get an example? It's a second. All right, whatever. Just, 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 just to grab almost at random here, the, the two recent prints. <coughs> just pretty much at random. The line work. This is two different people. We have, of course, Hokusai drawing something, kimono and pieces of a body and what. And we have Shigemasa carving something, kimono and a piece of a body. And when you are a carver in our tradition, when you're a carver, the easy quick answer is you just carve what you see on the block. There's the lines, they're already there, you just carve what you see. That we do, but it's not quite that simple. The every line that Hokusai draws, this is self-referential. Every line Hokusai draws is a Hokusai line. It it's his character, and it gets thick and thin. In this this case, thick and thin much more than somebody else would have done. He's got much more variety in his thickness and his thinness. There's much more splash when the thing hits the paper. It's drawn in a Hokusai way. And these are the things that even if you don't see the whole picture. A person who knows this, the, this genre and knows what's going on, you can give this person a piece of a print and say, who drew this? And an experienced ukiyo-e, knowledgeable person, expert, whatever, can say, look, this, of course that's hokusai. You don't even need to ask me that. That's a hokusai line. Now, it's a little bit more complicated here. I couldn't look at this and say, that's shigemasa, but I could say this is from the classical period. This could be Shunsho, Shigemasa, Koryusai, Harunobu, that group of people who all drew in a very similar style. And maybe then if you saw the face, you might be then able to say, ah, that's early Shunsho or Shigemasa. That wouldn't be Harunobu. So the more detail you get, the more chance you have to tell who it is. But the point is, the carver comes to this, and it's not just the shape. If I was into this spiritual stuff, which I'm not, I would say you come to the block and you become Hokusai as you're carving these lines. And you become Shigemasa. <laughs> it's not like that, but 
you really, really have to have a different mood and a different feeling so that your knife will carve it in a way that matches hook size lines. I know a laser could do it and it would look the same and it would look the same, but it wouldn't be the same, you know. It wouldn't be the same. And this is part of the experience that I have now at 40 years that pretty much almost nobody else here has because nobody else has carved so many different kinds of prints that I have carved. And next year's project, we have designs from one designer. I can leak it. It's Hoxai. We're going to do a Hoxai project next year, 12 designs carved by three people. I'm going to do four of them. Asuka Sensei is going to do four of them. Somebody else is going to do four of them. And we're working from Hoxai's original sketches, not woodblock prints that were already carved by somebody else. When I cut this, I didn't work from Hoxai's design. I worked from a reproduction that some carver already cut. And next year, we're going to do it a different way. We're going right back to the source. We have access to some Hoxai designs that didn't get turned into prints. And we're going to turn them into prints. Details coming soon, because you're going to see the first one. <coughs> you're going to see the first one on this bench uh, within a couple of weeks. So we'll be talking about it. You'll be seeing it. So just hold on to your hat a little time. There's no announcement about the series yet, but stream members will see exactly what's going on. We'll see. Anyway, enough, 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 enough. Today's Saturday morning. I am now, I have only a half an hour left. I've got to make a quick run to Lawson to grab a cup of coffee. And at 10 o'clock, on go the lights. And two and a half years of Mocha Hong Kong's shop sleeping is going to end with the grand opening fireworks and rockets 28 minutes from now. Minus the fireworks and rockets. <laughs> Wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. And I'll see you again Monday morning. Hey, the vegetable man is here. You can see the actual vegetable man himself. Okay, guys, I gotta go. See you later. Thanks very much. See you in a couple of days. Bye for now.